Friends, I invite you to stand as we begin worship this morning and face the font. And it is where we begin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'm going to just tell you right now, I think it could be an interesting day with our screens. Um, it started with a broken down car and then with a graphics card already overheating once this morning. Our hymn is also in your book. It's number 720. Use the screens, use your book, sing from memory, whatever works for you. But let's sing together. <laughs> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Mercy on us, Christ, and 
like sin and shame depart. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your world and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Old Testament lesson is from 2 Kings, chapter 4. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He said it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is Psalm 145. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. <clears throat> and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. The New Testament lesson is from Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God, now to him who by the power at work within us 
is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, Jesus went on to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not be enough to buy bread for each to have a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to them, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he'd given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also with the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told the disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who'd eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said to him, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake and got into a boat and walked across the lake to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The lake became rough because of a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the lake and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. And they waited to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached lands towards where they were going. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Well, friends, grace and peace to you and to me from God, our Heavenly Father, and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I was doing a funeral for a family in the community the other day, and I must admit that I expected it to go, well, differently. Because in my meeting with the family, the children explained that their dad was a hard man to live with. He seemed to have time for everyone else except his children. As his son put it, it's quite hard being Alan's son. He went on to tell me that their dad spent most of his time at work, and he did many different jobs throughout his life, a plumber, a restaurateur, and landscaper, to name just a few. As I tried to get them to describe their dad, it was a lot of work to get them to give me any kind of detail. No matter how I asked the question or how many times I asked it, they didn't really have a lot of information to share or things to say about their dad. Because of how I spent my time with them, I thought it was within the realm of expectation that this would be a rather quick, rather quiet funeral. But I was wrong. Because when we got to the place where the people in attendance were invited to share their remembrances and their stories about Alan, his son got up, his son who'd stated earlier that he was definitely not getting up to speak. Alan's son got up in the podium and said, Dad did the best that he could. I may have wanted him to be different, uh, expected him to be different, and it drove me crazy that he wasn't. 
here and now I know that he did his best for us. That's all we can ask of anyone, really. After I finished with that service, the words of Alan's son just kept running through my head. I wanted him to be different, expected him to be different, and it drove me crazy that he wasn't. Those words got me thinking. Got me thinking about how often our expectations are really unhelpful, and how they might even lead us on into trouble. Now, in our gospel reading from John's gospel this morning, we actually overlap with where we were last week, with the feeding of the 5,000. In his sermon last Sunday, Pastor Patrick talked quite a bit about frenzy, specifically the frenzied nature present in Mark's account of the feeding of the 5,000. And this frenzied nature that he wove throughout his sermon is really driven by the crowds, the crowds that are constantly present amidst Jesus and his disciples. We're told that large crowds are following Jesus wherever he goes as he moves back and forth across the Sea of Galilee. And these crowds are constant, so much so that the disciples, according to Mark, aren't even able to eat. But it's here in John's Gospel, where John tells us that the driving point behind this frenzy, it's not just constant, it's because of signs, signs that Jesus is performing, signs that point to Jesus' reality as priest and prophet, but maybe in their eyes something more maybe even the long-awaited Messiah, the Messiah, the one that was promised from of old who'd lead Israel and its people back to worldly prominence and dominance yet again, a mighty warrior, a poetic prophet, a king who would throw off Roman occupation and lead Israel back into the place it once occupied in the region. With each sign that Jesus performs, with each healing that he does, with each trip across the Sea of Galilee that he takes, this frenzy continues to build, build and build until it finally boils over, the constant presence of the crowd. Jesus is forced to address this frenzy head on. Jesus does it in a way that none of us would expect. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? Jesus said, make the people sit down. And Jesus took the loaves and when he'd given thanks, he distributed to them to those who were seated. And so also with the fish, as much as they wanted. Friends, a wise person once said to me that expectations are just premeditated resentments. I think that statement was as true in biblical times as when it was when I first heard it. Because look at what happens with Jesus and the crowds who follow him. Jesus has been teaching, preaching, healing, and performing miracles in their midst, and before they know it, poof, he's off to a different city and a different group of people. Imagine how disappointed and confused those folks must have been when Jesus departed them. Disappointed that they had witnessed incredible signs and wonders and so expected great things from this young prophet, only for him to move on. Frustrated they must be that their appreciation and adulation isn't enough to keep Jesus static. Confused they must be that the one who they hope will lead Israel and its people back to prominence can't be tied down without healing people of different cultures and different nations. Confused that God's Messiah isn't making military plans or amassing an army, but one who comes to teach and heal, to feed and serve. It's no wonder that those who are fed on the shores of the Sea of Galilee are the same ones who will shout, crucify him in Jerusalem. It's no wonder that those who are so frenzied to see and touch Jesus will become the ones who are caught up in the frenzy of Good Friday. It's no wonder because the Jesus they and we receive isn't like the one we expect. Frankly, Jesus shatters all of our expectations. The truth is that their sin and our sin causes us to get mad at that. Get mad that Jesus isn't the Messiah that we expect, that he isn't King David 
that Jesus isn't Santa Claus granting us whatever wish we have the moment we have it. Jesus doesn't work for us like we expect him to. That he follows God's will to the letter. Friends, if we're really and truly honest, how often do we work ourselves into a frenzy because God and Jesus don't work how we want them to? Act how we want them to? Bless us how we want them to or tend to us how we expect them to? How often do we confuse the reality of who Jesus is for us in favor of a Jesus we wish him to be? You know, friends, throughout our lives, I think we all get to a point where we think we know how things are going to go, where our sample size is wide enough where we can predict with sound accuracy how any situation is going to unfold. That's the problem in this gospel lesson, whether it's the crowds following Jesus throughout Galilee or we as 21st century followers. We think we know what Jesus, what God's all about. We think we know God right up to the moment where God surprises us. Because God won't be God on our terms. Jesus won't be king on anyone else's terms, but rather God does the unexpected the shocking, the surprising work of love and grace and mercy. Because that's what the feeding of the 5,000 is for us. It's a surprise. A surprise that we can come back to over and over again to remind ourselves who God is for you and for me. The table that Jesus sets for us, invites us to time and time again, serves as a physical reminder of what we've heard and believed simply because we're physical creatures. Physical reminders, because sin causes confusion and believing can be hard at times. So we have a gospel preached to us so that we may hear it. We have that same gospel given to us so we may taste and touch and feel it with our hands, our mouths, our entire body. Visible, physical words for visible, physical people. Visible, physical words of good news that tell the truth about who Jesus really is. He's the one who will give everything, literally all that he is for you and for me. He's our God's one of grace and mercy and love, whose love runs so deep that he would give himself all of himself that we might be freed from all of our confusion and misguided expectations. Church, we may want Jesus to be different, expect Jesus to be different, and it may drive us crazy that he isn't. But know here and now, in his love for us, God holds nothing back, and God risks everything for us. So we can remain who we truly are in God's eyes, holy and beloved children. Amen. Friends, let's stand and sing our hymn of the day. It's number 729 in your hymnal.
Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church, bless the ministries of our neighboring congregations, empower churches throughout the world, and encourage missionaries who, ac who accompany global neighbors. Kindle in us a spirit of collaboration that all people may know your loving works. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for creation. Send rain to lands experiencing drought and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat. Nurture wheat and barley crops grown for the nourishment of your people and conserve aquatic habitats and fish populations. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who govern, cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption, and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire them with a vision of the common good and a commitment to ensure that all who owe hunger are fed. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable housing, and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of those who call to you for healing. Today, we especially pray for Ron Henry, Russ Hokinson, Danny Mason, Judy Parsons, John and Barb Williams, Dave Frampton, Ruth Bowles, Lois Hardy, Nelson and Diane Murray, John Newcomer Sr., Carol Ruckel, Kevin Meinholt, Hildy Crothers, Lamont and Sharon Smith, Stephen Benscoder and family, Richard Pierce, Ron Norvell, Inga Keith, Kelly Croft, Lisa Kalinowski, Monica Doherty, Jeffrey Stirk, the family of Joe Mignona, and Joan Marie Powers and family. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this assembly, deep in our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance. Lord, in your mercy. At this time, everyone is invited to offer your prayers, either aloud or in your heart. We give thanks for those who have died. As you sustain them through all their days, so dwell in our hearts that we may have the power to comprehend with all the saints the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Lord, in your mercy. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace with those around us now. Well, friends, good morning. Welcome to St. Philip's Lutheran Church, where our mission is to make disciples, praise God, and serve the community. It's great to have you worshiping with us today. I have a lot of announcements today, uh, so sit tight. Hang in there. Um, the very first thing I want to uh, lift up are a lot of the ministries that are getting back up and going again uh, as we approach the fall um, need help. For example, our Kids Club, that's our Sunday school program. Um, because we have added so many families over this time, we are foreseeing the need for extra teachers. So it's not an every week commitment. You rotate in and rotate out. Uh, it's all scheduled and everything. Uh, so we need a few people, a couple people to kind of help out with that. If you uh, are able to do that, um, you can see Sharon Kittle, who is all the way in the back, uh, sitting there with the red mask. So hi, Sharon. Um, so uh, she can uh, give you direction on what that commitment would look like uh, and what, you know, what would be needed from you if you are interested in doing that. So check in with Sharon about that. Also, uh, in the fall, we'll be back to doing Growing in the Gospel. That's where at the second service, uh, children are taken out of the service to be given uh, kind of an age-appropriate lesson that kind of goes along with the gospel since the sermon, you know, our sermons, you know, me and John, they're like way over our heads, even you and me. So, um, so uh, just to, if you would like to help out with that, if you're sometimes at the late service, uh, see me or Pastor John, and we can, um, we can uh, direct you with that, uh, get you to the right person who can help uh, let you know what that might be like. We also need worship assistants, people who are willing to read, 
distribute communion, greet people at the door, be ushers, that kind, those kinds of roles. So that is, those are all needs that we have as things are getting back up and going again. Um, if you are interested in helping out in worship, see me and I can uh, direct you or Pastor John and we can get you to the right people as well. Um, there is an event coming up on September 17th, um, which uh, went out in the email, which as I will explain in a minute, should have gone out on Friday, but went out uh, literally just half an hour ago. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so uh, the gentleman's name is Carol Brown. He's coming in from South Carolina. Mark Davis is uh, putting this together. He is um, a guitarist um, who plays both uh, gospel type hymns and secular uh, songs and everything. Mark Davis is putting together a night out with Carol Brown. Um, you're actually not going to go on a date with him. I know it sounds like that. Um, but you'll be invited to come here to our fellowship hall. There's going to be food and fellowship. Um, if you are interested in that, in your bulletin, in the email that just went out, um, contact Mark Davis. He needs to have a commitment of, John, is it 40 people? It is 40 people. He needs to have a commitment of 40 people um, in order for, to make it worth the while for Carol to drive all the way up from South Carolina. So if you are interested in that, check out the bulletin, check out the email, and you can contact Mark Davis, and he can give you more details on how that will go. Um, out in the narthex, you should have noticed when you came in, or if you didn't, if you look as you walk out, you'll see the name tags are back out there on the board. Um, this is a great way for us to be able to help get to know one another, um, especially for a lot of the new folks that are here and the folks that have been here for a long time who see new folks. Um, so if you have not uh, grabbed your name tag as you, as you came in today, um, please try to remember to try to make that a habit in future weeks. It'll really kind of help that uh, process a lot. Um, again, if, as I said last week, if your name tag is not out there, let me or John know, and we'll let Lisa know. Some of the name tags got lost, and there were a couple last week that we found out. We thought they were there. We thought we had checked them off the list, and they just weren't even there. So we had gotten mixed up on that. So let us know if they're not there, and, um, and we can make sure your name tag is there. Um, trying to think. Uh, Pat Spey left tomatoes out on the table, and I'm glad she left them out there instead of throwing them at me today. Uh, but you are welcome to um, take them with you if you like tomatoes. Uh, I, guess, I guess they're out of your garden, right? I didn't know if you just bought them for all of us or whatever. So they're out of Pat's garden. If you are interested in taking some, she left them there for uh, anybody who might want them. Um, communion. You'll notice John and I have set up communion uh, in this way today. Um, so we're going back, if you wish, to giving out bread and pouring wine in individual cups. So let me just, before I tell you more, let me tell you how that part goes. So um, the way we're going to do communion is you'll be coming up the center aisle. Um, around the outside of each tray are empty cups. If you want wine when you come forward, bring an empty cup and we will fill it with wine. If you want grape juice in the center of the tray, our little white grape juice cups. Remember them? Remember that from, gosh, two years ago? Remember? That's how it went. So you can bring that up and you can have grape juice and we will serve you the, the, wine, the bread and as the wine comes around, we'll offer the words to you so you can drink your grape juice or your wine at that point. Then you can put your cups uh, in the side baskets and return to your seats. We'll be going like this again. Okay, we'll be going kind of in a circle. Uh, except for those of you on the outside. So for those of you on the outside, we'll let you go last, if that's okay. And you guys can just come up here, get what you need, and fill in around here. And you guys will come up, get what you need, and fill in around here. Um, for, those, for everyone, you have to remember the way we used to do the flow of communion. You would come forward, grab what you need, and then you'll walk on up here, and you'll fill in starting here if you're on this side, and we'll fill in this way, right? Remember? Nod to me. Let me know that you're with me. It's been a rough morning for me, I swear to you. Um, and then if you're over here, um, you'll be coming forward. You'll start filling in here and around that way. And John and I will, you know, helicopter around uh, with Sharon Price and we'll uh, serve everybody. And then you can return to your seats. Um, so let's say you don't want real bread. You're not comfortable with it yet. Totally cool. We have our wonderful blessed prepackaged uh, communion kits here for you. 
Um, we understand that people long to be with them every single week, so they're here for you if you want them. Um, the way I would encourage you to, to uh, let us distribute uh, in that way is when you come forward, we've spaced them out so that people aren't reaching in baskets for them. Just grab one, come forward as you normally would. When I come around to give bread, you can have yours already pre-peeled back and you can have your bread ready and we'll offer the words and then you can eat. And then when the wine comes by, then you can drink as well. Does that make sense? Did, I tried to make it as clear as I could. Um, there's a lot of moving parts with this. Um, so we're just trying to make it go, eh, it might be clunk, clunky the first couple times. We might make changes. Just follow the person in front of you and you'll probably do just fine. Right, right, right. So, um, so I'm going to have John come on up here because John is going to start with our first announcement. So, uh, like a lot of things haven't gone right in the last couple of days, including me pulling a squirrel out of my chimney. But uh, that's a sermon for another day. Um, but I had one job. Liz Freeberger gave me one job this week, and that was to send out an email that said, hey, on Sunday, um, we're going to be, uh, Catherine's going to be here, and Catherine is here. Um, and we're going to be packing up all of those school supplies, right? I had one job, and I did it. I sent out that email, but just to Lisa in the church office. I left you all off of it, and I found that out this morning. So, um, John, what are we doing uh, between services today? So we are concluding our July Summer of Service programming, which is our, our school supply collection for the Foundation of Eagles, which Catherine Howard is the, the founder and is it CEO? Executive. Executive director. Okay. So we are, we are going to be concluding that programming by sorting out our items. We aren't going to be actually packaging them in the um, the bags that are going to be given, just because transit is a little bit difficult. Um, so pack, having all of these bags packed is probably more difficult than just having everything ordered as the items in which we collected. So if you can help us in between the services uh, in the social hall, we're going to be sorting all of the items that you graciously and wonderfully collected, donated, and brought to the church. So if you can help us as you are leaving the church by stopping by the social hall for a couple of minutes to help us sort that would be Please awesome. Get me out of the doghouse. <laughs> and with wait, Liz. And Mary Duncan also printed out messages for each notebook, so we're gonna have um, stickers to go inside each notebook for each kid. Yes. A positive message for them. So we're gonna Yep. So if you can stop by in the social hall too after you're done sorting and write a message to one of the students who'll be receiving these gifts, Mary Duncan has printed out cards that we're going to be putting in the inside cover of the notebooks. So um, thank you all for your generosity in this program. It's, it's a really wonderful organization to work with, uh, and I'm sad that we're concluding our July programming. We're moving into our August programming, which is our familiar 25,000 meals program. Uh, I'd invite you to look at the back of the bulletin for more details, uh, but the big thing is we are trying to fundraise the total cost of this project. Uh, so if you're in the Narthex, there's a poster board that's tracking our progress, as well as some envelopes where you can uh, donate towards the program. Uh, to be nice to our counters if you want to help out, please use the envelopes. Uh, I know there is another form in the back that you can tear off and write your envelope number uh, along with your check, but the envelopes in the Narthex are the preferred method of helping our counters. Uh, but the total cost of this program is $7,500. That roughly translates out to about 30 cents per meal. Uh, so we would love anything you could donate towards this program because these meals are going to be split between the Food Bank of Delaware and St. Stephen's Lutheran Church's Food Pantry. And both of those organizations are doing really needed work for food insecurity in Wilmington, which is still a very real concern in this part of our country. So anything you can do for that would be very much appreciated. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, John. Offering plate, you guys know where it is. Uh, thank you for your gifts and your offerings. Why don't we stand and continue our worship? And let us pray together. Generous God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, you call us from death to life, from silence to speech, from idleness to action. With these gifts, we offer ourselves to you, and with the church throughout the ages, we give thanks for your saving love in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you.
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, breath of life and fire of love, with a mighty wind you brought creation into being, and by a pillar of fire you led your people into freedom. We praise you for the gift of your Son, who poured out your Spirit on his disciples of every race and nation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and the sending of the holy and life-giving Spirit, we await his coming again to renew the face of the earth. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send now your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this meal. Anoint us with your gifts of faith, hope, and love, that with thankful hearts we may be witnesses to your Son. Come, Holy Spirit. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Friends, in the confident hope of God's love and saving grace, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God given for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All are welcome. Please come.
Friends, let us pray. Holy and compassionate God, in bread and wine, you give us gifts that form us to be humble and courageous. May your words come to life in our serving and in our witness, that we might speak a living voice of healing and justice to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Seriously, get me out of the doghouse. It'll only take a few minutes down in the fellowship hall. We're going to sort those things and go in peace, serve the Lord.